Greetings from the World Meteorological Organization Secretariat uh, here in Geneva. Our weather and climate and water cycle no, knows no national no, no political boundaries. Uh, international cooperation is uh, essential. This philosophy has driven the work of the great meteorological family since uh, 1873 and will guide us uh, also in the future. The demand of, uh, for our expertise and our science has never been higher. The, the World Meteorological Day of, of this year, 23, is very special because it takes place uh, during the 150th uh, anniversary of WMO's uh, predecessor, the International Meteorological Organization. For the past 150 years, uh, National Meteorological and Hydrological Services have collected and standardized the data which underpin the weather forecasts uh, we now take for granted. The history of uh, WMO data exchange is a success story of scientific co cooperation to save lives and livelihoods. We are the second oldest uh, United Nations agency. We are proud of our achievements uh, and will celebrate them in a landmark uh, year when our decision-making uh, World Meteorological Congress will agree strategic uh, priorities uh, to promote our vision of a world uh, which is more resilient uh, to extreme weather, climate, water and other environmental events. Few words about uh, our main initiative, uh, Early Warning Services for All. There is increasing momentum behind the ambitious drive to ensure that the life-saving early warning systems uh, cover everyone uh, in the next uh, five years. The Early Warning Services for All initiative uh, launched by United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on World Meteorological Day a year ago was endorsed at the COP27 in Salmesek and has won support from developed and developing countries from the UN family and the private sector. Early warnings work. They must work for everyone. Half of WMO members still do not have adequate multi-hazard early warning systems, and we need to fill the gaps uh, in the basic observing systems, uh, especially in least developed countries and small island uh, developing states. Early warnings uh, are a low-hanging fruit uh, of climate change adaptation, which is no lo longer a luxury, uh, but a must. According to the World Economic Forum, in the next 10-year uh, time frame, Failure to mitigate climate change, uh, failure of climate change adaptation and natural disasters are the highest uh, risks for the global economy. They are not only a matter of comfort. At least half of the, all disasters are water-related. Uh, at the United Nations Water Conference in New York from 22nd to 24th of April this year, WMO will show how water-related hazards uh, like floods and droughts are increasing. Climate change and the melting of glaciers will also lead to more water stress. Better wa water monitoring and management are essential. This is why WMO is working on global water information system to promote the free exchange of uh, hydrological data and also improvement of, uh, of cooperation between meteorological and hydrological agencies at the country level. Our second big initiative is related to greenhouse gas monitoring. Climate change is defining a challenge of our time. How we respond to that challenge will determine the future of our planet and our children and grandchildren. This will be highlighted in the synthesis of the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. The global average temperature is uh, more than 1.1 degrees higher than it was uh, when IMO was founded 150 years ago. Our weather is more extreme, our ocean is warmer and more acidic. Uh, sea levels have risen and glaciers uh, and ice are melting with higher and higher speeds. The rate of uh, change is accelerating. Atmospheric levels of greenhouse gases uh, remain the record level, and yet uh, there is currently no comprehensive uh, 
time the international exchange of surface and space-based uh, greenhouse gas observations. To fill uh, the void, uh, WMO is seeking to develop the sustained and coordinated global uh, greenhouse gas monitoring infrastructure. It would expand and consolidate the WMO's long-standing activities in greenhouse gas monitoring under the auspices of the Global, global Atmosphere Watch and the Integrated Global Greenhouse Gas uh, Information System. The concept is based on, on highly successful World Weather Watch, uh, which was uh, ushered uh, in, in, at the start uh, of the satellite era and celebrates its uh, 60th anniversary this year. It remains the gold standard for international cooperation. The members of WMO can be proud of uh, our achievements uh, in our long and rich history. We started uh, uh, life uh, in an era of uh, Morse code and telegrams uh, for shipping forecasts. Uh, supercomputers and satellite technology are opening up uh, new horizons uh, for ever more reliable weather climate uh, prediction with the possibility of kilometer scale uh, climate uh, modeling which we are also uh, promoting in the long, longer run. There's a need to go to higher resolution of, uh, of, of climate uh, modeling to better describe the hydrological cycle and future extremes, including, for example, what's going to happen to the melting of Antarctic glacier, what kind of uh, ocean atmosphere uh, glacier interaction is taking place and how quickly the Antarctic uh, glacier is going to melt and there are big risks related to that issue. But even in an era of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we st still depend on, on the personal dedication and commitment of the staff of uh, National Meteorological and Hydrological Services who work every day of every year to save lives. We thank you all and I would like to wish you most successful World Meteorological Day of 23. Thank you.